So Barry, thank hey. you for coming on again. No problem, thank you're, you, man. You're here again. Part yes. two has finally came around <laughs> at long last. And uh, I was just looking up there. Yep. You were originally on uh, episode five, which yep. I think would have been January time. That's exactly when it was. Yep. Wasn't it that long ago? Uh huh. This is going to be episode 49. 49? <laughs> no, you done well, man. No, I guess it's great. What you're so, doing, man. Absolutely brilliant. You love talking even more than me <laughs> to the point that we needed to make two parts to it. Right, okay. And uh, we discovered, we don't need to go over any of the stuff from the first one because we already discussed your influences, growing up, learning your instrument, yep. uh, writing songs, gigging, playing in the wedding band. So yep. what I was what I talked to you about was two main things. Was the, f- the first one was How We Met. Yep. Which was obviously the big thing was the charity Christmas single. Yep. And then the second one was, I know that you've got back into doing sound with uh, film. Yes. Now, I know that this is a new project you've got on the go, but mm-hmm. I knew you'd done it previously, so I was yep. wanting to talk, to talk to you about that. Cool. And, uh, get your thoughts on it. Absolutely, um, man. See how important it is. Hey, right? that's very important. But that's what you of need. Of course, man. of course. <laughs> but going back to see the, the Christmas single, so mm-hmm. what year was that? So, I know it was lockdown. That was 2020. That would have been so... And it, how that came about, I was literally just sitting in my living room and... Um, so when when in, twi- when in 2020 uh, did you start thinking up this idea? The idea was September. September 2020. So what caused you to think up the idea? So, again, literally sitting about thinking, I was bored. If I've been honest, I was, generally I was bored. Yep. And I was like, can I wonder if I could do it? My, my head, probably yours, mate, it's constantly, it doesn't stop. Yep. I'm constantly thinking. And um, I thought to myself, right, what could, what could I do? Something really creative, something good. And this is and right bang in the middle of lockdown. This is right bang in the middle yeah. of it. And this is um, this is where I came up with the concept of, I wonder if I could release a charity single. And all I did, I put it, obviously, on Old Faithful Facebook, Facebook yep. just to get people's, just to make sure that... Would anybody be interested? Interested in it. That's the first thing. Mm-hmm. And just to see what kind of a feedback that I got. And... Cause it I, shot I, I, all over the place. I was like, right. man, this is. This is crazy. I'd never spoke to you, and yep. that I messaged you. That's Obviously, right. I knew of you yep. through various friends mm-hmm. because we kind of have the same circle of musician uh, friends, yep. but we'd never cross paths. But I thought. I'll just message you at the blue. Aye, well, and, uh, I'm glad you did. And, you, and obviously you came back. Yep. Um, the, be- the beauty of it is I had my own studio, so uh-huh. it was as simple as I could record whatever I want and yep. just email you the files. No, but, totally. but tell us, so you obviously came up with the idea, mm-hmm. put it out to the, the public, yep. to see what kind of reaction you got, Aye. and then so, what happened? So basically, once I did that, then I was the next step I was like, right, I want a good Christmas song. Because I initially think that I just write one, and I went, "No, nah, I'm." It's not as easy as you it's think. It's not absolutely not my. I spent a Christmas single. No, I mean it has to be spot on. And, and then I thought, what, "What would be a very fitting song?" And of course, "War Is Over," mm-hmm. John Lennon. I thought well, there's probably, I would say there's probably five Christmas songs that most people, if you said, "What's your favourite Christmas song?" that would come under the. the oh, five. I de- definitely. It's probably that one. Yep. Probably Wizard. Yep. Slade. Slade. Uh, Pogues. Yep. Oh, one. Aye. Aye. And I don't know, maybe. Maybe Mariah. Mariah's normally a top that contender. That Shaking Stevens. Shaking Stevens, I But I would well. say more than likely that would be your sort of five. Yep. So why did you go? Did you go with that one just simply because you're a big John Lennon fan? So I went with that one. One, because I thought the words were really fitting, everything everybody was going through at the time. Yep. And secondly, I got copyright clearance. With it, right. um, I phoned up Emu Bands, who was a distributor for the song, right, okay. and um, I asked them their advice if they could put me in touch. And basically, it was something that even I didn't know. Um, but apparently, the the general rule is, and again, if anybody's watching, they can <laughs> double check. But I'm yep, we'll see if pretty, this matches what I think. This so. is this is pretty I'm pretty sure. Well, yep. That's what I got told. Um, I teach PRS, PPL, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. When it comes to actually, it can get really complicated when imitating someone or copying someone else's song because then you get your different rights, like the publishing rights, and you want the recording rights, and you want who wrote the song, etc. Yep. Anyway, Emu Bands gave me the green light. They went, look, as long as it's like for like, you can release it. 
and I went, nice one. So that's what I'd heard as well. If you're recreating yes. the song, there's no major changes, no changes to the words or the melody. Obviously, you, you would still need to say written, oh, I, written by whoever. Yep. The only time you would need actual... I, I didn't realise this. The only time you would need permission from the original artist would be if you were going to change it. Yes, so change it in terms of... If you want to do a remix, for example, yeah. then you need copyright. Um, then you need um, artist permission yep. for that. Um, and also you would need artist permission if you wanted to use that song. For example, in Morrissey, for example, mm -hmm. if, if you... Let's say you want to, want to record one of Morrissey's songs yep. and use it as part of a McDonald's advert. I'm sure Mick Morrissey would have songs to say about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. So, but yeah, so the things like that. So basically, once I got the, the clearance for that, I was like, right, okay, do this is doable. And then I started in my head, I was like, you know, it'd be pretty cool. I could get everybody, I could get whoever's wanting to sing, singing mm -hmm. their own wee part and just building up the, ask, what? The, the chorus, uh, the verses. You're a musician. Yes. Why did you choose not to play on it? Do you know something? I didn't mean I had to actually my I wee shout out to, to Jamie Taylor. Jamie was my right hand man through this project. Is this the guy you do the gigs with? No, that's no. that's a uh, that's Davy. Davy oh, Reed, right, I do the gigs with. So Jamie, Jamie's a good pal of mine. Jamie's a great musician. Um, is he a he, bit of a man behind the desk as well? Uh, a wee bit. Um, he was there basically just as my career. It's always good to have a, a set, another setting, uh, a setting set of years there. Uh -huh. Something to listen, go, what do you think of that? That oh, was good, maybe try this. Just bounce some ideas off it. Mm -hmm. Plus he was a major help um, in the actual organisation and stuff. Going out, filming people, yep. recording people. So no, J Jamie was excellent with that. Um, and it was, I went for speed to him one night. Him and Scott Ashworth actually asked both of them. I went, what did I play in that song? And I'm listening, I'm trying to listen. I went, I played Hee Haw. I'm, I'm guessing like, though, I there's played nothing. so many, it turned out there was so many people. Was, it, was there any space for you? No, I mean, I, 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 I dare say I could have overdubbed another guitar, but yeah. what's the point? Man? Is Does that they a, need it? Does they need it? Does they need it? Because I, I remember you you do I can't remember did you, ha did you have like a it was like a karaoke version that played yes. along to that because so, it's the same key and yeah so basically tempo my, and everything yeah so that so basically it came down to my, the, the method that I used I sent everybody the same karaoke track yeah that way everybody could practice and we're all in the same uh, ball court we, mm -hmm. we know exactly what it is we're recording then I got um Dave Cantwell on the drums. He. Where played, was that recorded though? That was recorded at the college. The, the college right, so was that like just that. the two meter di um, distance and so, masks yes, and all that sort of thing? Absolutely. So basically, we had to make sure that um, he was in our room. Matt, I think at that at that point, I think you were allowed. You just looking through the window. Looking through the window. But then I suppose that's actually quite good anyway. No, totally. Um, so he played along to. The back track, and yeah. that, that gave me a basis for right. that, gave me a, a bit of foundation for that. Then, rather than saying to everybody, right, you sing this part, you sing this part, and you probably mind yourself, I asked everybody, sing the entire track. Or do whatever you want. So, do whatever you want, as long as you're singing, as long as you're singing the right yeah. lyrics on the entire track. Then from there, I would then break down, right, I'm going to take that one, that verse yep. for Ian I want to take that section of verse from, from my dad because I remember I submitted to you I, I did rhythm guitar yep. just chords strumming I done lead guitar mm -hmm. I don't know what was used in it mm -hmm. and I'd said to you before I, I'd never done I'd only just got into singing uh -huh. right? I, I, was, I was quite shocked so, that actually when, cause I but back to it. I'd, be, I'd be weird if I went back to it now because I remember at the time I only sang the verses because I, f I felt the chorus was too high or in the wrong key for me. Right. So I, th it's only the verses. So I know that you used me on the verses. Uh, no, totally, yeah. But everybody comes out of the chorus. I'm not on the chorus, so I, th I think not? I'm maybe at the end, but when it's like everybody's singing at the one right. time, I'm maybe in there somewhere, but I'm not on the chorus because the, I, I couldn't do it. So the beauty of the, of the chorus there um, was I managed to get even people that maybe weren't that good a singer. Who, yeah. who claimed to be like, like well, I'm not a great singer I just want to be involved which is great yeah, yeah. I was like perfect sing the chorus yeah. and again it just helps build so that how up. long did it take though because see if I'm thinking like just, let's just go with the vocals 
Do you remember how many vocalists yes. submitted a version? There was close to 30. Right. 30 vocalists, I'm sure. And I don't mean, mean this in a bad way, you don't need to name names. Was there anybody that you didn't use? No. No. So, so everybody was used? Everybody was used, and I'll tell you why. One, because obviously it took the time. Yeah. I, mean, I appreciated everybody's help. Also, that was the beauty. I mean, you when you hear that chorus, it's funny you talk about the end bit. Yeah. Because I've even got like the the motorbike. Uh, oh, the, the club. The the motorbike club. Uh, yeah. What's it called? The Seven Sins, uh, MCC. And you can actually when they come, in, you can actually <laughs> hear it, and it was great. You know what I mean? But no, no, that's uh, especially my song like that. It's just about let's sing along and mm -hmm. just have a good time that way. Don't be wrong. I did keep the verses too. The professional singers, people that, that have sang professionally. Which is, is funny that you then chose me. <laughs> I would have known me. I would never have known. What about uh, though, like, see, like, you're, you're not going to have five drummers playing. So no. You've got Dave on drums. Dave was, on, Dave was the only drummer. What about bass? Bass guitar, that was a, 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 an old school part of mine. Billy Kay. But it was one, one bass. But one so bass. I, I know Billy's name. Aye, so Billy Kay, he's a great guy getting the podcast for you. Mm -hmm. Billy's, a, really, Billy's a great guy. And then great player. was it. Was there piano? I can't remember. I can't remember, but Where's there's the obviously piano? guitars. That long ago? Did, did you? So, for example, I submit me playing rhythm guitar. Yep. Would you have that start to finish, or would you be like, right, I'm going to have Ian's rhythm guitar on the oh, first day? Okay. Instrumentation start to finish. Right. So it's just the start vocals that were you picked and chose. The vocals were where it was in the song. The, the vocals were right. So that was so really was that really you and Jamie sitting going? I think that like suits its best. And yep. Was there any disagreements then, or no? Me and Jamie. I mean, that would have been fun to do. No, totally. I mean, no, me and Jamie were. Uh, it was um, we were kind of on point. I tell you the bit where we did struggle. No, I, I'm using the word no struggle, but the bit that took the most work was the bagpipes. Bag How did you record them? Right. <laughs> right. So the reason I'm asking is I've tried. Mm -hmm. Wasn't bagpipes? It was small pipes. Mm -hmm. One where you got the bag under your arm. Mm -hmm. I tried to re to record that for a song I done. Yeah, and I could not get the thing in tune. I don't mean this against the piper, no, no. As it, but the guitar was perfect e tuning. Yes, the bass guitar perfect e tuning. So he's trying to get these Pipes. because it might be one in tune, but the other one's slightly off, and it didn't matter how many times I adjusted it. Yep, something kept going off to the point I had to scrap it. So. With bagpipe, bagpipe is what they call it, a diatonic instrument. A diatonic means it's stuck in the one key. Right. Um, it's not a chromatic instrument, so a guitar's like a chromatic instrument where you've got all 12 keys. Mm -hmm. What I had to end up doing, first of all, I got them to turn off the, the low drone. Alright, okay. Got them to turn that off and just have the melody playing. Who, before you get going though, mm -hmm. who was playing the pipes? So, it was a guy called Craig White. Yep. Um, is that a local boy? Yes, yeah, so basically how I got in touch with Craig, Memory serves um, we Samantha, who was actually one of my students. I've known Samantha, she was that I used to teach her guitar. Mm -hmm. um, Samantha's just completed the university now, and uh, anyway, she was uh, she was involved in the project. She done some singing for me as well. Um, I'm sure it was hard mentioned about because I was looking for a bagpipes. Uh, I was looking, I was looking for a bagpiper, bagpiper, paper, paper. There you go. <laughs> Good to think there. Yep. But anyway, so uh, it was a uh, Craig. So he invited me down to his house. This was still the kind of a lockdown, right? so it was all that social distancing, mm -hmm. which was a pain, but necessary, obviously. Um, so what I did, as I say, is that the bagpipes, I think, are in the key of B flat. This song's in the key of A. Did you just adjust it once? Well, once recorded. <laughs> it was just as simple as that. The what we have to do is so Jamie and I we recorded the main melody of the bagpipe. Now Craig, poor Craig, man, you had to sit with the headphones on, listening to a song in the key of A, whilst him playing in B flat. <laughs> right, okay. Now, as a musician, you'll know how tedious that is. Just to be one semitone out, it's probably the worst. Yeah, yeah. It's probably the worst interval you can be out. After that, I then just recorded the drone. The right, okay. So anyway, taking it back to my studio. Jamie and I, we were up to about 3, so 4 sorry, o'clock in the morning. What was the reason for recording them separate? Was, uh, it, was it simply that easier to edit? Easier to balance. So, right, okay. Um, when I, because we did try it, and I was like, I was getting too much of the drone. So just keep, basically, the, how I work in a studio is I like to have as much control over the sounds as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so 
it basically meant that I could adjust, I could bring that drone down if I wanted to and bring that melody up. Um, so that, that, that was, that was so all like for I, it. I just done an episode, a band from Australia, and they're talking about recording their, their EP. They recorded all the drums without cymbals, added the cymbals oh, in later. Dave Grohl trick. Because obviously you don't want it feeding over into the toms and that. stuff like yep, that. Yep. But uh, it's the same I, sort of idea yep. though. Aye, because um, I, I watched uh, Dave Grohl and Taylor Hawkins. They were in two separate rooms and mm. I think Taylor was playing the main kit and Dave Grohl was playing the cymbals. So two of them sat with yep. the headphones in. Strange, eh? Yeah. Really strange, I always say. But again, great technique and again, just for that separation. Um, because as you say, you've got to get a lot of that bleed. In the mics, but I so basically once I got the I got the bagpipes in the session, mm-hmm. I thought oh, I was back case of just probably plug in here. Let's just put up a semitone. No, it just didn't. They, it <laughs> no. didn't work. It sounded horrendous. Um, so I've got a program called Melodyne. Right. Melodyne is I don't want to like to use the word auto tune because it's not. There's nothing automatic about it. Mm-hmm. Basically, this thing will. It will basically tell you every single note that's been play, played and you can adjust every single right, note okay. from the start of when the bagpipe's played to the end of the that song. sounds long. We, me, Jamie and I sat, Jamie, and it was a case, how's that sound, Jamie? Because my ears were getting fatigued, he was like, that sounds mm-hmm. fine. Bang, bang, bang. To, when the next I, day you listen to it again, listen to it again. make a adjustments but, in the next day. I, but yep. no, it worked, worked an absolute treat. What about um, your snare drum? Could you snare have, drum, so. Was that, that just one? That was just one. Now, what did I do with the snare drum? I'm sure I got them to do three or four different takes and then I layered them. So, so where were they They playing? <laughs> I felt sorry for the neighbours that night, that was in his house as well. Right. So you got the back, bear man, it's like 8 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. So he's got the back playing, then you've got me in the crack of those snare drums. Yep. I mean, it's, it's got such a fast attack on them. And uh, but I, that's, that was really simple, an S57 mic, just recorded. And what about, so, as I said, when I done the vocals in my mm-hmm. recording, I had the, the the beauty of having my own wee man cave yep. that I could do it. Yep. Send you the files, do whatever you want with them. Yep. A lot of people don't have that though. So <laughs> I know that there were stories of because you're during lockdown, you're not allowed to have contact yep. with people. Stories of dodgy cars parking next to each yes. other and so tell us about how you this came so, about. Um also as well as, well as my home studio. Um, obviously I've got my I've got my laptop and that as well and in an interface. Yep. I was able to take that into my car and basically turn my car into this mobile recording studio. <laughs> and basically what Jamie and I would do, we would fact find we're in Jamie's car. What we would do we would set up the microphone, have to wipe the microphone that yeah, yeah, yeah. down, pass it in either through a living room window or through another car. Yep. Through another car, get them to sit. And they would have their headphones on. So there's people uh, driving, parking next to you or the other way around. Singing. And you're rec- recording. Yes. In a car. Yes. Wait for that car to go past and Aye. stuff like that. In fact, I think I left some of the car noises in. I thought, <laughs> well, I'd say the ambience starting. Yeah. Um, but. Whoa, whoa, stop the noise. There's the icy. <laughs> that's that. That's that. That's that. Hey, he's doing key. <laughs> but, um. But I, I mean, that was challenging, I'm not going to lie, I mean, I think Jamie would agree with that as well, that was really challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we got it back on the studio, listen to it on, that sounds how How long, once getting everything in, how long do you reckon it took to mix the entire thing? Oh, to mix it wasn't it too or bad. Were, or were you no. mixing, sort of editing, mixing as no, going no, along? So, so my process for any, 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 any recording, it's say uh, obviously organisation first. I'll always plan right what, what am I recording? Then I'll go to the tracking stage. Mm-hmm. Track can always get the best sound possible. I mean that's something that I'm I'm very particular. I will always make sure I see the the audio I record, I will always make sure I could mix that and it would sound fine without a plug in or that on it. Right. That's that's the key thing. After that I then go to the editing stage where I'll tidy up things, I might move things about, I might yep. move a word here or there. Um, then it's off to the mixing stage, then master them, mm-hmm. um, then delivery. And see when you look at the entire thing, mm-hmm. was there any part of it in hindsight now that you, you were worried like that's ah, just not working? Or, or was it pretty much you had that much input into it that you know you were going to 
you were going to get the guitar part or you were going to get the correct line off somebody. Aye, I mean, there was a couple of bits where maybe you're, you're going through a different takes, you're going, I'm laughing with them, and then you come across, oh, that's good, right, thank right, 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 one So you're kind of almost like you're picking, I've got to pick, you don't want it to be the best of a bad bunch, I don't mm-hmm. mean that in no, a bad way. No, no, totally. But you're it's, hoping for that one, you, the minute, I've mixed enough that you go, that's the take, that's, it. that's the one. That's it. Aye. Um, I mean, don't be wrong, I, I mean, um, obviously I did have to use a wee bit of correction uh, tools, uh, like some Melodyne for some because remember mm. this is the first time a lot of people had recorded I yeah. mean and, I mean, you know what I mean it's a total different experience it's, mm-hmm. it's not like you're playing live it's not like singing a karaoke and the fact because it's it's getting recorded you can hear this back you know what I mean it's, it's, I mean the beauty I've got in here uh, I, I don't know, I actually remember too much about it but I could have spent the whole night in here mm-hmm. to get the perfect take yep. if I'd showed up parked my car outside your house mm-hmm. You, I'd maybe feel under pressure. We've got to get this done in, in half an hour. Again, exactly. You the know. circumstances as well, and the the location, and the then environment. If, if you've never done it before, you might feel I've yeah. got to get this done in two or three takes because yeah. this has took twenty minutes now. No, this is it. You know, but again, I mean that's what a lot of people don't realise as well. It's not just one take. For I mean, you know yourself, I can take five. Seven. Mm-hmm. I've usually I, my rule my my rule for doing takes way when I'm recording anybody. It's almost three to five takes. If I think you're not going to get it in the third or the fifth take, I'll go right. Let's move on to something else. And let's come back to that if we're not happy with it. Yeah, that's generally what I do. But I know fair play to everybody that was involved. Um, but as I say, I did have to use some correction tools because, funny enough, <laughs> it was during the verse and the sort of the chorus. There, Merry Merry Christmas, that mm-hmm. bit there. Everybody sang that. Yeah. So I had some. Ave, ave, ave. <laughs> it went, I went, shit. Oh, they're all starting at the wrong time. But again, thanks to the wonders of technology, there's a plug-in, eh, which I highly recommend to anybody. <laughs> highly yeah. recommend to anybody that's in their, their music production called Vocaline. Right. Vocaline, you basically pick the master track. Memory serves, I'm sure it was Laura Begley's track. I took her as the master right. track. Sorry, the one leading everything. The one lead. Yep. And basically, if you can imagine this plug-in, will copy the different her timing w- her timing right then I'll adapt every else's and see when I hit play right. I went oh yeah. man yeah. it was so big because there was that so many singers yeah and it, how, and it, so it was, how many singer, singers do you reckon there was I was about 30 I think it was about 30, about 30 singers oh. all in um, and had I, you always I, I know obviously once you got the track all done mm-hmm. there was the video that went with it but yes. was there always the idea to do the video because I would imagine you'd be maybe like are we going to have enough time to do it all so no, let me get this right let and you're still under right. restrictions of I still under restrictions I mean so let me get this right yeah so basically the video I, I, we got the mix done and I I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't put a date on it until I got the date back from EU bands of when I could release this which I'm sure was the 18th of December Right, okay. Once I knew it was going to be out before Christmas, I was like, right, music video. Mm-hmm. And literally, I went about with my iPad again, me and Jamie again, shout mm-hmm. out to Jamie again. And we just went about everybody. I played a very rough mix of the track. Yeah. Just got people to obviously sing along yeah, as you, music video does. Came, you came here, that's the first time I met you. Aye. Came uh, in and it was literally that's five right, minutes. I, that's right, that's right. Because I think it was maybe th- three, three different lines I had yep. to sing. Yeah. That's right. So, something like that. Or maybe playing the guitar or, or something. I can't Aye, quite remember. That's right. And, uh, and basically going around all the local businesses that were great. What about all your like, drone footage and everything? The drone footage, that came from... Oh, what's the guy's company's name again? So Scott Drone. Scott Drone, thank you. Scott Drone. Um, his footage was great. So Scott Drone has... Uh, I contacted Scott Drone for my own band project. Uh, Alright. And I'd said to him... Have, uh, have you got any drone footage? I've done a song. It, it wasn't about Bonnie Bridge. Mm-hmm. It was about growing up. But for me, I grew up in Bonnie Bridge. Yeah, so yeah. I said, do you have it? I'd seen the... Um, I typed into YouTube drone footage mm-hmm. Bonnie Bridge. There was nothing really coming up, but there was there was footage of the Falkirk Wheel, Stirling Castle, all these different bits and pieces. And it's all the same person, Scott Drone. Who's Scott Drone? Contact them. Do you by chance have any drone footage of... Of Bonnie Bridge, yep. came back to us. Was it you're after? 
Right, here's the idea. I've done a I've I've done a video and uh, you know there's obviously different locations are mentioned throughout it and uh, to be fair to him he took it away and it, it's on YouTube. There's, all right. there's actual I've got a whole video right. and it's just all footage of Bonnie Bridge he created the entire thing oh, for me. Oh brilliant man, superb. But yeah. I see these footages eh? it's absolutely superb. Yeah. And of course it starts I don't know if this was older footage mm -hmm. or if it was if he'd done it at the time. No, it was older footage because he. But he's, there's some great stuff that he done. He must have done maybe the previous Christmas or that because it snows falling a wee bit. Yeah. It's like Denny, Denny sort of town centre. You've got like the Christmas tree lit up. It's obviously absolutely dead. No cars about or anything. So yep. it looks brilliant. Oh, it's great. And I say it's a name. I just have it. I'm sure the start of the video it goes into the, the, the tree. And of course, the funny thing was, so obviously, Simon Gillespie will be speaking about soon for the, who I work with the movies. Yep. Um, Simon edited the music video for me. And his idea was he went, if we can get the drone going down mm -hmm. at the start of the video, but then as the video ends, we'll call it, get it doing reverse. Right. And we had a very tight margin to edit. The reason being, because there was a couple of cars passing. <laughs> so if you can imagine these <laughs> cars going backwards, it just ruins the shot. No, totally. So, but no, no. The, uh, Simon, Simon did great. And what about the idea? Because the thing that I liked about it was video starts. It's not just the song. Who made the decision to have? You obviously done a radio, radio interview, interview yep, yep. to advertise the project. Mm -hmm. Whose idea was it to actually have a bit of that audio that leaking into the start of it? That was me. I did. I did that on the morning of of it. I was editing because when I saw that, I saw Simon put the footage together. I went again. Did you just feel like it needed that extra? I thought just a bit of context, a bit of explanation, almost. Absolutely, and um, it was um because it, it just makes it sound. I mean, it would have sounded good without it, mm -hmm. but, but I think it elevates it totally. And it was actually Wolfie for Central FM. He's been absolutely brilliant with me with my different projects, now like the live and the drive thing that I did. Uh, Scott Ashworth uh, projects, what have you, and I, I messaged him, I was like, any chance I can use some of the the audio, he was mm -hmm. like, of course you can, in fact, I'll send you through the high quality stuff, right, okay. they've got to record, they send me through, and that wasn't the full interview, but I just picked, you just picked the bit you're yeah, wanting, totally, mm -hmm. and uh, I, no, I, thought, I thought it worked really, really well, and I gave, I, uh, I gave people that bit of context of what it was they're about to watch, and they knew that it was just a community, Video and what about getting so you've done the music video? You've got all the different musicians, bits and pieces. But what about all the local? There was like local businesses, yep. dance schools, biker clubs, all yep. that sort of thing. So, how did you approach the ones that didn't have anything to do with actually making the song? So, um, let me get basically, I, I put a message out saying if any local businesses want to be involved, part of it, I mean, I'll just be a case of I'm gonna really sing along with the chorus, which I th again. What well, great is that? So did you just ask those bikers just cuddle up? Aye, happy. that's it. I could have the same. <laughs> so obviously, being a lecturer, I'm, I'm used to talking in front of people, but it was one of those ones, quite intimidating. You're in this biker club. I mean, I mean, yeah. really lovely guys, really lovely guy. I mean, obviously, I've known, I've known a few of them. Fair, I was that height, mm -hmm. and um, and I was like, right, okay, I'm off set time to shoot. And I was like, right, right, guys, okay, right, let me get them. They were absolutely bright. And did the dance? See the, the the dance school mm -hmm. or schools. Yes. Was that footage that already existed? No, or, or we, went, we went shot that? that. They actually had a full kind of a dance routine again, but because there were so many things in there, just had to we could all have to pick and choose. Um, as such, what happens with it with the editing? Yep. Um, and it says about the local schools. Well, yeah. school uh, St. Pat's. They were excellent. They actually got they actually filmed their students in the playground. Right. Um, and then I got I had this idea of getting all the teachers to sit down on the students' chairs <laughs> and get the students teaching the teachers. Right, okay. So I had a wee shot Just of that. It around. And uh, then my pal Carlin, she works at Sympat, so I got uh, the, kind of, all the kitchen staff and that to, to do See, looking back that. now, mm -hmm. see everything that you wanted uh -huh. from it, whether it be the recording aspect or the video part. Is everything in it that you wanted? Was there anything that, that in hindsight you go, oh, I wish we could have got that, but you just, for whatever reason, you, it, could, it wouldn't happen? You know what? I don't think so. I, I, I was really, really happy with how it turned out, how it sounded, everybody's involvement. Because I know the response online mm -hmm. 
you know, put up on social media. Yeah. You know, I was I, obviously tagged in bits yep, and pieces yep. and that, but I mean, it, it done really well. No, it did really well. Yeah. And it, and it, it did cheer people up. No, I, don't, I mean a crap I, time. I, I mean the amount of messages I got people saying, Barry, I just want to say what a great job. I'm actually sitting here with tears and that in my eyes. And, and I know that you'd done. I think you done a poll with regard to who do we donate the money to because there was various different yep. um, charities yep. and, and so I, places that need, I, need all the support so and um, I, I think it was Strathcan Hospice yes. that eventually won the poll yep. how did you go about approaching them? So in terms of the poll I always made I always wanted it it's a, it's a democracy it was never this is my choice. I'm oh no, I remember you, put, I, no, no, I you said to people, what do you want? Yep. Yeah. Um, and then when I spoke to Strathcairn, um, it was actually somebody called Claire I was dealing with. Um, oh, they were over the moon. They were absolutely mm-hmm. thrilled. And then that's obviously because I went up and shot the later half of the video up there as well. That's where the paper, where the paper all comes right, in. Okay. That's all shot up at Strathcairn. Right. Um, so again, I know they were great. They were, they were over, over the moon. So do you think, um, obviously, if you were to do it again, it'd be a lot easier nowadays because you would just oh, it's just say, come, come on to the studio, yep. this date, time, whatever. But there was people afterwards saying, "Oh, look, let, let's do another one mm-hmm. at some point." Do you think you might do? Possibly. One? I mean, I'm. I'm extremely busy. No, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm really, Are you? really I guess <laughs> I, I, extremely busy. Um, obviously, with other projects. Um, but no, it's something I would. I, I, no, I would like. I, I'd probably like to As do it again. Another Christmas thing, or would it be just something that involved everybody? I mean, Christmas is the obvious choice. Christmas would be the ob- obvious choice. Again, it would be nice to. To get an artist was single out there. Part of me kind of think you've already done it though. So would See, you top that, it? Would you? I don't think you'd be top that. I mean, it could even be a totally different angle. Like let's let's do a summer anthem. You know what I mean? <laughs> it could be something like that. It could yeah. be. So Aye. It might be something down the line, but maybe. Yep. I mean, whatever. If it ever happens again, it will certainly be. Mm. Easier. I don't know. I don't know if that means it's less fun because it's such a story behind that. All right, totally. That charity single yep, yep. and how it came about. I, I mean, even like just that's the, almost part part of that is what makes it. Mm, totally. And I think um, I think the opportunity would need to come up again because, as you say, I think it was that moment of right time. Although be a shitty time for everybody, but it was the right time. It was a good thing to do, and it worked well. The other thing as well, well, the amount of people on social media at that time, because everyone's stuck in the house, that you probably don't have the same level of viewing numbers mm-hmm. on it because life's kind of back to normal now. Yeah. Everybody's out and about doing things, yeah. so maybe you wouldn't get the same type of Possibly. response. Yep, I know that's a really good point. Um, I mean, there's that thing as well. I mean. I mean, so that was what four years ago this year. Yeah. I mean, f- Facebook and that. I mean, it's, it's the older guns. But you see, yeah, yeah. use Facebook now. You know what I mean? Instagram or TikTok or something. Well, see, I've got Instagram and that there. Even Instagram's getting a bit old. Well, I, yeah. It's um, I I post to Facebook and then it'll automatically go to Instagram. But I, no, you're totally right there. I, I, I think it would need to be there need to be the right opportunity that comes up again. Like a, a, yeah. something else would happen. I'm not like a lot down with that. But there would, need, there would need to be a specific event exactly for it to be. And the one good thing, I know you said you didn't take part in it. You you, did, you chose eventually not to play mm-hmm. or, or sing or that. But you and Jamie still got your your Merry Christmas at the well, start. Well, Jamie, Jamie played <laughs> Jamie played guitar and Jamie, oh, did Jamie sang in it. Right, okay. Um, Jamie did a great job of that. By the very very start, that's the only bit I've done. I love that because it's funny. Whenever I'm driving along my car and I've got my Bluetooth on shuffle. Awesome here. Well, you know what? I've got. I've still got it on my phone, right? And uh, it's. It's. I think it must be. Uh, it's always the first song uh-huh. on my iTunes, right? Right. You know, you plug and it, it in. drives my daughter up the wall, right? Because every time I put the tunes on, before I manage to flick to something, all you hear is Merry Christmas, Barry. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, Ah, oh, Dad, it's July. Ah, <laughs> I say. 
Aye, it's very strange to listen to it eh, when it's sunny and it's like, yeah. I mean, bye. But no, it was a, a great experience. It was, it was really good. I think it was aye, definitely a, a great achievement and aye, a higher big well done to everybody who was cool. involved in it. So that's obviously the Christmas single, yep. which we didn't manage to cover the first time round. Mm-hmm. The other thing I was wanting to talk about was, now, I know you've got a, you and your friend that's like a sort of film company yes. Yes. of sorts. Your friend's doing more of the filming side, I think you do more of the sound yep. side of it. Yep. Now this is, you've got something on the go at the moment. Yes. But last time we spoke, that wasn't on the go, but I knew you'd done it previously. Yes. So I was wanting to talk, so... I suppose you can lump it all together overall. Mm-hmm. So how did you get in to, what is the the term for it? Is it sound, sound technician? Sound design. Sound design. Sound designer, okay. So, right, let's go back to the... Is this part of you at college? Yes. Potentially. The reason I, I, I say that is I've done a, a music and audio technology course long, back in the olden days. Back in the right. Right. I was going to say maybe the 90s. Nah. <laughs> right. And, uh, in one of the classes in it, mm-hmm. well, like you had your recording, you had a uh, part of it was like um, like the audio, uh, mm-hmm. sorry, the, the visual side of it, but there was a class and it was to do with sound and film. film. Yep. And we had to r- go and write an essay. Why is sound important in TV, movies, whatever? Mm-hmm. And I based my entire thing mm-hmm on the Jaws soundtrack. Great. Right? Yep. Do you want to know why it sounds important? Go and watch this film. Because without that soundtrack, that film... Why? Totally. ...is rotten. Two notes. And, and you know Two what? Notes. I mean, you, you'll have heard it before. Made in the 70s. Technology was crap back then. Mm-hmm. They had the big fake shark. Yep. Wouldn't work. How do we get around about this? Right? You've got the underwater camera. You take away that soundtrack. It's boring. No, totally. Two notes. Yeah, two notes, but right. E and F. E and F. Now that'll be right. like 50 years old now, right? Mm-hmm. You go to the swimming baths with your with your kids. Aye. What do you hear all these wee kids running about? Totally. Right? I don't... Uh, who, was it John Williams? Yes. I never... I nearly never made the movie. Right. I nearly never made it. But that... Is such an integral part of that mm-hmm. franchise, that being mm-hmm. what it was... My essay that I done was you want to know why sounds important. There's that film, one of the biggest selling films, and it wouldn't be anything if it wasn't oh, for man. the soundtrack. As many films, man, as many films. Yeah, but but that, but that that that's the, for that film specifically. The music was the actual James was, James. was the character. Yep. Right yeah. now you got a lot of important music in films. But that, the music was an actual character. See, that's, that's what a lot of people don't realise. Sound can play a character. Mm-hmm. Best, the best uh, example I can give, if you've ever watched Paranormal Activity, mm-hmm. do you ever see the demon? No, you will never hear the demon. Therefore, sound is basically yeah. creating this image inside your head of what that demon is like. The other thing like. I've seen, there, and I don't, know, I don't know what the YouTube channel is, but there's... There's maybe various ones, but what they do is they, they take well-known scenes from films and they read it, and they wipe out the sound, and, and they obviously put in fakes, silly, yeah. silly noises. But it it just confirms how important the Probably. sound is. And it, it, the one I always remember is it was the end of Star Wars, yeah. When they're walking out, there's a big sort of parade thing, and they're, they're getting presented their medals, uh-huh. and and it's the it's the wee robot walking along. Uh-huh. <laughs> it just sounds rubbish. <laughs> In a big uh, empty hall. Yeah. Now, obviously, they've done it for for comedy value. Aye. But if there was no sound, it would sound probably something similar <laughs> to that. So it does show you how important my, music and sound is. One of my favourite clips, just to give a digress of you, um, one of my favourite clips to go and check out is Dancing in the Street. Oh, I've seen it. I've seen it. David, David, Bowie, David Bowie and, and uh, Mick Jagger. Jagger. Uh, it's got the tears that I was... Yeah, and just the, face. the shoes and on it, the floor, and, and it's, it's been the, the outside, <laughs> eh, the, the outside shot. Yeah, and they're going. It just looks like two guys pissed, going in for the pub, and they're dancing. That is brilliant. So when he's dancing, and, and the one in the middle was doing the drinks, he's just ah yes, go, 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 go. <laughs> go, go. that's brilliant. But I so basically, when it comes to that kind of side of it, back in two thousand eleven, 
Uh, no, sorry, 2010. Um, obviously, as I since the last time I was on um, playing guitar, for was five years old. Mm-hmm. I've always been involved in music. Uh, I've always done recordings, etc. I've always, always had my own week or what have you. Um, but I wanted to take it further. Um, so I was, what, 25, 26 at this point? And I decided to enrol in a course at Fourth Valley College in the sound production course, but I now teach. Yep. Enough. Um, so my whole plan was let's get to college, let's let's get my H and D, let's open up a studio, let's record bands. Yeah, yeah. First three months in that college, there was one class, and that t- totally changed for me. And it's when I was introduced to sound for film. I was always I was always made aware. I was always aware of music and film and the importance of et all of it, but I just never knew how important it was. Mm-hmm. And I so anyway, I got introduced to this class and I just absolutely fell in love with it. And I was working just all my time was <coughs> focused into this. Yep. So it just so happened Simon Gillespie or Simon Jake. Um Simon had been funny thing, I knew Simon for years <laughs> where before this right okay um, I was an apprentice mechanic once upon a time Simon worked at a a vehicle parts company right and he used to deliver parts to the garage I was working in right okay. and the two of us he played in the band I played in the band or two of us were writing the music and they go pally for them mm-hmm. oh Simon how you doing blah blah and then it just so happened when I was at college I remember in fact, I still remember it. I was leaving the college to go up to the retail park, probably go to McDonald's or something. <laughs> but I happened to see Simon. I was like, oh, Simon, how you doing? You and he was, really? he was working on a movie called... I kill me if I don't remember that. The Wild Side of Life, it was called. The Wild Side of Life. And is he doing more the filming side of it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I got talking about you up there. I was like, oh, I'm back at college now, blah, blah, blah. What are you up to? He went, I've just finished editing a film. I was like, alright, cool. And he and I said, I'm doing something sim- you hear all the time. Nah, I was like, ah, mate, so I'm doing sound production. He went, maybe you can help me. He went, I need somebody on set to help me with the sound. He went, I'm not good with the sound. Visually, he knows what he, what he, 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 knows what he wants. But so then, when I came board, it was just a perfect partnership, man. Yep. Brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. And we, funny enough, I found the very first thing that I ever wrote. For Simon's film, The Wild Side of Life. Um, I, I was a bit. I think we were I heard it, but anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, after after that film got showed at Cineworld, Simon spoke to me. He said, Look, Barry, he went, I'm starting this new movie. He went, I'd love you to come on board. He went, basically, he went, I'm doing the visuals. He went, I just want you to take care of the sound. So for then, it was always that 50 50 partnership. It was just. Yep. And it, it worked absolutely brilliant. And the very first movie we did, which back in 2011, was a movie called Setting Rainbow. And again, remember this is low budget, if I'm saying low budget, there was zero budget, you mm. know what I mean? It's like this podcast. But, there you go, <laughs> no, right? but again, as long as we've got the technology, I wrote my master's thesis on the, this very thing, creating a soundtrack for a movie with a zero budget. But again, mm-hmm. I'll come to that. So, and, but, but when you're talking about sound... Mm-hmm. It's not just the music side right. of it. So, is it the picking up? So, what do you want to hear? Sound with the screen. You basically break sound into four main categories. If you like, okay, you have got the dialogue. It's obviously the person right. speaking. Um, you've got obviously your main sound effects. Mm-hmm. Okay, so sound effects are anything from footsteps to thunder Background rolling, noise, that sort of thing. Yeah, with your ambience. So depending on which environment that person is in. Summertime, what, birds tweeting, all these exactly. right? But even interior sounds as well, so that would come under ambience. And then obviously you've got your music. Now don't be wrong, there are sub, subcategories to all of these mm-hmm. as well. But essentially that's your four main categories. That's something that you need to, and you need to consider every single one in sound to help tell your story. Um, so for example, like the, so it's a cliche, you've got a horror movie, tell you where, weather, you hear them outside. Thunder lightning. There you go. Yeah. So cliche. Yeah. But it's a great tool and it works. It basically lets your audience it lets your viewers know what should what should they be thinking. And again, this is where stereotypes get uh, used 
game quite a lot as well. Now I'm not saying all stereotypes are good, obviously they're not, and I'm totally against any stereotypes that do offend. However, there are stereotypes out there that can get your viewer thinking, oh, right, that's that. I don't under, I know what that sound is. Mm-hmm. Um, I get, so, for example, you see a guy with a leather jacket walking about a swagger, and you've got the big distorted guitar music, yep. and then you hear the belt buckles and the big clump of the foot. Motorbike roaring there in the background, go, something you like know, that. This is a hard man. Yep. No, I mean, you, you get that vibe, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it's just sound. But but you think about it. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. TV, film, everything. You probably don't actually give it much thought Absolutely because you're not. so used to. You've just been brought up your whole life. Yep. Watching this, but it's you need to make sure it's the right, the right sound for the right moment, or it ruins the whole thing. Absolutely, definitely. So. Um, Saying that. Right. So, with sound for film, as you say, it's all about making sure it comes back to. I mean, the, the very first protocol for me, especially as a new movie that I'm working on, a, an honest working man, I mean, the first thing I, I, I get from Simon, we'll discuss what the movie that's about, it's a script. The minute I get the script, I'm reading over it and I'm making notes, right? That kind of music can maybe work there. By and I start. And you, re- yeah, you don't need music everywhere as well. Oh, so definitely what, not. So what bits need music? What bits don't? Yep. What, what needs this, that, the next thing? Exactly. What bits? I mean, even but it, you can start to get creative. Obviously, but you, when your ambience, do you want a kind of a growl in your ambience? You, you know what I mean? There's a lot so of see, things like that. See you being that involved with it. Mm-hmm. See when you watch a film now. Mm-hmm. Murder. Do you can you just watch it as a movie go or, or does your brain automatically go right? I'm thinking that was a great use of sound there. Or I would have done that. Or, ask I, ask my missus. She yeah. hates going to cinema with me. The reason I'm asking is the previous episode I, I done. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had James, who's a, a guitarist in the theatre world. Mm-hmm. So I'd say to him, having done it for so long now, I says, can you go? To watch a theatre production and just watch it, no. and he says no. He says automatically. No. I'm I'm thinking, what's the guy doing down there? What's yeah. the drums doing? You know, my sister is a dancer. She's in the theatre world. Mm-hmm. She can't. She can go and enjoy the show, mm-hmm. but she is watching because she. she I would have done this. They, they should have done that better. See. Blah blah blah. Brother-in-law, he's a singer. Yep. You know, same sort of thing. It, 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 because you're just in that world. Absolutely. So is that the same for you with sound? Yeah, it's, it doesn't matter what I'm, if I'm listening to a podcast, if I'm listening to a, an audio book, if I'm watching a movie, TV programme, I'll be watching going, I saw, or, that's the soundtrack, what happened there? I'll rewind it. Oh, they, okay, they've done this, I've done that. Mm-hmm. Or, funny enough, I was watching a movie yesterday, what was it called, Ezra? A new movie with... Um, Rose Byrne and her right. husband, Byrne. Uh, Byrne, Byrne, no, Byrne. I've not seen it. Uh, really good, but again the music, I didn't think, I didn't think the music suited it. Have you noticed, um, we'll always keep talking about, um, have you noticed CTV programmes, this drives me up the wall, mm-hmm. they're in a cafe talking, Yep. drives me up the wall because whatever the song playing in the background on the jukebox relates to whatever they're well, talking they're about. Talking and again, that's... And somebody's making that decision. Mm-hmm. Not totally. But loads of people, that they, they would be oblivious to it because yep. it's just background music. Uh, but yep. it'll be somebody like falling in love for the first time and they've got time of your life playing in the background. There you, of, go. you know, And it's just again, wee these, things like these that. These are all conscious decisions. Um, and again, it comes back to that word, narrative. What sound is going to help support the narrative? Mm-hmm. What sound is going to help tell that story even better? Did you ever see during lockdown... Sylvester Stallone mm-hmm. now he was probably just bored like everybody else he decided to do to do a director's cut of Rocky 4 it was the most successful of the franchise yes and um, so he decided to go back and I think he'd filmed almost double the amount of footage that was originally used right but, but it got edited down and at the time he was probably happy with it and then in hindsight you probably think, I 
should have maybe kept that scene in and that, that could have been taken out, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. So he went back and he, he redone it. And the recut version is the same length of time as, as the original one that came out, but half the movie is different. You, it's different scenes. Oh, really? So it, it's, it's almost like, I love the film, right? Uh-huh. It's like somebody filmed your favourite movie twice in two different versions. Oh, really? I'm not yeah. going to check that out. And then, but there was, he'd done episodes on YouTube and it was him talking about, each episode was him talking about what he was thinking about do, doing, but he was in a studio and it came to the sound. Right. And you'll know what it was like back in the 80s, you're punching and it sounds like a sledgehammer hitting. Aye. And he's like, no, nah, he's like, so all the sound was wiped, like we need to replace it yep. so it's more realistic sound and, and you know, he's tired at this point, so that punch there's not going to be as hit, hard hitting sounding as the one at the start and, yep. you know, a lot, a lot more thought probably went into it. I know, definitely. I mean, that's something that a lot of people don't realise. 90% of what you hear in a movie is complete bullshit. It's a lie. It's been made up. It's fabricated yeah. in a studio. Why? For that very reason. That punch shouldn't sound like that. We need to bring that punch back. Yeah. That punch... Right, we want to get that. Fine enough, you mentioned Rocky. So if you watch Rocky 1, mm-hmm. if you watch the end fight with Apollo Creed, when you watch see him punching, you will not hear like the, the Hollywood... <laughs> you won't hear that. And again, because they never had the budget for it, that's the story I heard. Right, okay. On Rocky 2, remember I always showed you Got the previous... Got a bit more money. A bit more money. Yep. And Rocky 2, see how they always showed the previous fight. Of course. You watch the previous fight. Yep. All the sound effects are in it. Because obviously they've got more money. So they could add that. Right, let's, let's add these sound effects back in again. What's some of your favourite movies then for for sound? And I don't, I don't mean... Uh, well... If it's the soundtrack, fair mm-hmm. enough, like the actual songs, but for the actual sound, just, you think? just sounds in general. Yep. What, what's some of your favourite? Oh, Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Phenomenal. Um, you think about a war movie? So let's see. War movie opens up. What are you expecting to hear, music-wise? Like a mil- military. Exactly. Right. Saving Private Ryan. You do not get that, and part of the reason of that, they wanted it very realistic. The research that went into Saving Private Ryan as well, mm-hmm. um, to mimic the sounds that they had. So I mean, you, when you hear the German guns, when you hear the the, the right. Allied guns, they're completely two, two different sounds. Mm-hmm. But even when the soldiers got in the, in the water, it was uh, the sound designer was uh, Gary Wright's from in that movie. So like the bullets flying in the water. I mean, how he got that was he had a fly fishing rod. All right, okay. And see when the line it's laying it's, on the water, yep. and you lift up. Right. That's the sound he recorded mm-hmm. for the for the bullets. I mean, incredible. But again, just the, <coughs> the immersiveness um, of the same Private Ryan. Then obviously the bit where you, you saw the movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember the bit where the, uh, Tom Hanks got shell shock? Mm-hmm. And you just hear those filters coming in. It's yeah. basically it's just uh, I get such a. Really Have you seen a film use. called We Were Soldiers with Mel Gibson? No. That's great as well. Right. It was probably made around the same mm-hmm. sort of t- maybe not as early as Save Saving Private but Ryan, but that that does the one where mm-hmm. uh, it's the Vietnam War, right? And uh, the 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 big bit in the middle is it's getting to like that that peak of uh-huh. the film. Nah, br- and the, the, it's obviously up to that point. It's just battle sounds, right? And then it, the battle sounds cut out, and it's a song. But what they do, it was a Scottish band uh-huh. that they used, and who was it? You know, a, it wasn't clan or drummer, but it was something right. like that. And instead of it being actual sounds, it was almost just like a drone, and then it's just one person, kind of half singing, and it's like half like a poet speaking a poem. Yeah, and it it fits so much That's better nice. than a military thing, but. Someone's made that decision. That yeah. is what is going to suit this scene and Again. elevate it to a whole new level. And, and every time somebody watches it, I see people reacting to it and they go, "What is that song?" Yeah, because it it affects you mm-hmm. when you're watching it. You know, it makes the story more emotional. Yep. Again, remembering a lot of a lot of people don't realise. A lot of people think visuals are more important than sound. Now I'm not here to debate one or the other. I do, we shouldn't, but I, I yeah. want to be. But the reason a lot of people, as you say, kind of a bypass sound, remember, you can't see sound. 
Mm-hmm. You can only hear it. Whereas you can see visual, so therefore... Sound your imagination. Exactly. I mean, look at Aliens. Beep. There you Beep. go. You know... Great example, I. Dark. Yeah. Oh, you've got... Uh, there is that background noise, which is the meant to re- replicate space, and yes. it's just that sort of ambience. Well, drone. I, yeah. And all you've got is that beep of the, the gun that's looking for movement ahead. Yeah. I mean, that's a good point as well. Um, I mean, a, a lot of the space movies get a lot of shit. For some people go, because obviously space is a vacuum, you get no sound. Yeah. Obviously, because you need that medium for sound yep. to travel. And this would be like, this would be kind of a physics um, and art punch mm-hmm. uh, or, 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 or punch, uh, lock heads. Because, I mean, if you, you know, can you imagine, I mean, I'm not a Star Wars fan, I know, shocking, no, but, I'm not either. Um, but I mean, could you imagine watching a movie like Star Wars when it's just all silence in space? Mm-hmm. It would be daft. Yep. Um, there was one movie that tried, and I think they did it pretty well, to replicate what that's, what the sound would feel like. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain a bit of the science behind it. Uh, Gravity, by Sandra Bullock, George right, Clooney. Okay. So... Sound, sounds obviously vibrations, okay? So the minute I talk, my vocal cords are moving back and forward, therefore it's moving the air, mm-hmm. the air's going back and forward like that, it's what they call um, peaks and troughs, and it's causing the waves. That wave will then hit your ear, hit some your, what they call your tympanic membrane, or your eardrum, yep. that moves back and forward, and then your brain translates that to sound. When you take air out the road, that's got nowhere yeah. to go. However, if you're in a spacesuit, that spacesuit's full of air. If you then touch something and you're talking, that vibration is going right there and it's going in the table because remember, sound, mm-hmm. it's just not, not just air, yep. sound travel in any medium. Um, and when you listen to gravity, that's the reason you, you hear all those kind of a weird, creaky sound and it's so clever, mm-hmm. man. I was like, I like that. I was like, it's. Yeah. The, the, try replicate. the other one that springs to mind is 127 hours. I think that was the name of the film. Is that where so uh, James the, Frank? Or? Yeah, so when um, he's playing Aaron. Um, so when he got the rock? Aaron something. He, he gets stuck with his arm. Oh, I and uh, I remember them talking about filming it, and mm-hmm. it gets to the point where he's having to self amputate. Yes. And obviously, it, it was quite realistic because the guy survived, so he was able to mm-hmm. be on set and say, this is what I've done, this is what I didn't do, mm-hmm. and it was all well documented. And it was, how do we get a sound? We, we want the audience to be part of this, yep. right? So it's horrific, you know, having to self-amputate, and you get the worst part of he had said himself was the nerve. Which is like a, 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 like a, a string of spaghetti, Aye. right? And it, he obviously had to cut it. And they're saying, how do we, how do we, what do we do to make this scene yep. better? And it was, we need to make some sort of noise that visually you would think that's, that, you, go like you that. know, so it was like high pitched violins or yep. something, but just split seconds. So it was almost like an electric shock yep. if you were talking. Aye, no. it, it, but it's fascinating, but you don't think someone's had to sit down and go, what do we need to do totally. with this to make it better and then how do we do it? Yep. I mean, so I'll give, give another example as well. Um, so talking about Simon, the first movie we did was Set in Rainbow. And the next movie we did, which was quite successful, was The Last Love Letter. Mm-hmm. The Last Love Letter, we had more of a cast, with more of a crew, it was great. Um, but there was a scene in that movie where Simon's character, he has got one of the bad guys, we'll call them, we'll get one of the baddies. And basically Simon takes off his shoe, the guy's strapped to a chair. Mm-hmm. Simon gets a pair of pliers, puts it on the guy's toe. Now you don't see it. Yeah. Puts the pliers on the guy's toe. Tell me, tell me what you know, tell me what you know. And then the guy eventually does say, Simon goes, like, thanks. And then you see Simon's arm going up like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Now you never see the toe. You see that the pliers, he's got a pair of pliers. Yeah, you, you, you see he's got down there. So again, something like that, when I sat down with that, I wanted it to be as gruesome as possible. Mm -hmm. I wanted the audience to go, oh, to look away, even though they're not not, not looking away for nothing. I mean, so what I get for that? So when you're recording kind of a gore sounds, the best thing you can get for that is stuff like celery, tomatoes, squishing down tomatoes. Um, 
the snapping noise and snapping noise and that yep. but again even frozen celery you get kind of a long one you bend yeah, yeah. it and you and again seeing you right up close so what mic are, and what are you, are you so that's let's use that scene for an example mm-hmm. they've already they've, they've filmed it you know yep. how, how visually it looks do you then go away afterwards yep that's what they call po- post production and do then do you just try out different things until you find the sound that you think best suits yep. that scene so my my main my main thing whenever I'm on set capture that dialogue that's the most important and sorry thing. who was the name of the person filming Simon so the, is Simon does he have a part or is he pretty much my job is to get the visual I'm then happy to, to pass that over to Barry oh, to right, do so the sound part He's all visual, all, all, all sound. Oh, be it, he'll, he'll have a look and go, yeah. Oh, I mean, we, we, we cross yeah, over each but other. I mean, you're, you're pretty much like, Simon, you make sure it's captured yep. for everyone to see. I will make sure it's captured yep. for everyone to hear. We'll then get together and make sure we're both happy with the yep. end product. So I'll give, the, the, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, a typical um, scene, all right? Okay. So basically, I'll be on set I'll be with a boom mic or a lav mic, whatever we've got there. Um, we'll record the set. We'll record the, the scene. Sorry, Simon will then go and edit that scene. He'll edit it till you get what they call a locked picture. A locked picture means that scene's now finished. Right. It's locked. It's now ready for sound. I'll, he will then send me over that sound. I'll get the the audio I recorded, sync it up, and I'll get a wee list. Tell me right, okay. Then, see the, that see at that point yep. is that just the speaking part? That's just the speaking part. That's right. all I've got. Beforehand, I, mean, I was talking about I'll make wee notes in the script. Yeah. I'll go back to my notes and go, right, what did I say originally? Say there, right, okay, let's try this bit of ambience. Sorry, so, what I was going to say though, like, for example, two characters mm-hmm. standing in a field on a summer's day. Yep. When you get that sound, does the, does the, the mic pick up the, the other sound? Does it bleed through or is it just. The, that mic is purely for dialogue. So you, so you have got to add in that other... Everything. So the sounds I'll add in... Kind of a bit like, you know, like if you record the drums with the cymbals, they will leak into mm. maybe the tom mics or that. So it's nothing like that. No, no, nothing. So basically, my job there is to pick up the dialogue. Once I've got that, I'll then go to my... It's Pro Tools I use. I'll go to my Pro Tools session. I'll then am, add an ambience. So the ambience will be... Whether, Small room, Maybe big room the bird, outside. The here outside. Yep. Whether it's in a room, whether it be outside, whether it be in a field, is it a sunny day, is it night time? Mm-hmm. It dictates all that. But even location as well. So that I'll, I'll put in my, my ambience. I'll then think about, right, what type of, what, what foley do I need? So foley is recreating character sounds. Mm-hmm. Character sounds broke down into three separate things. Footsteps, close sounds, and then actions. Actions are things like if you've got a character picking up a book, Opening up a door, right? Is, okay. So then you need to have three tracks per character. I did not think there was that much Men. involved. I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you the session. Mm-hmm. I've still got the session. I've still got the session. So there's. I'll do footsteps for one character. I'll then do it for the next character. Next character. So you're just having to sync up everything, everything that you visually you see. Yes, everything. Mm-hmm. Once I get all the character sounds, great. I'll then move on to sound design. Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll move on to what they call hard effects. Hard effects are pre-recorded sound effects that we can use. So, for example, let's say there was a gun getting shot on a scene. Mm-hmm. Right, let me try this gun effect. Mm, let me try. I like that one. You know what? This will be your sound design now comes mm-hmm. in. So you like that gun sound effect, but you think it's needing to be a bit more futuristic. Mm-hmm. Let's add a wee laser sound underneath that. So see if, if you filmed something and it was like, say it was like a, a car speeding away. Yes. Screech of the tyres. Yep. Right. Would you not use the sound when that was actually filmed? No. Would, would that be completely different? Completely different. So I've got I've got my own sound. I've got about forty gig worth of my own sounds that I've built up over the years. <coughs> okay. Um, but normally I'll I'll spend a day. So and have you created most of them yeah, yourself? Yeah. So I'll you know, I'll spend a day going out getting the sound effects that I need. That way I'm getting back to that one having pure control over what it is that, that you're trying to capture. So I'll go out. In fact, I'll give you an example. There's a, actually a clip on YouTube. You can see Ron Atkinson when he's filming Mr. Bean. Mm-hmm. They're out filming and they're only capturing the sound of all the different car sounds so they can sync that up oh, later. Right, okay. So basically, once I do the foley, I'll then go with the hard effects. Once I do the hard effects, I'll then think about sound design. That's why I put my own spin 
on the sound? What 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 can I do to make it more original? What's something? What what's what's not been done before, or what could really emphasise this scene? Mm-hmm. Then does it need a bit of music? Is a bit of music going to emphasise it? And the then, music's a funny one as well because you think back to the future, mm-hmm. Power of Love. I mean, it's the actual song playing, yep. right? Rocky Three. You got Eye of the Tiger. It's, yep. the, it's the actual song. But there's hundreds and hundreds of music that it's not an actual song. It's just like the swell of a violin and just totally. to, to emphasise whatever mm-hmm. the characters feeling on the screen or that. Yep, that same. Um, I so I mean, that, and again, that's that's what you call score music. So mm-hmm. should I say that as well? So music can get categorised into two. Obviously, you've got your pre-recorded music. So a really famous director that only uses pre-recorded music, Quentin Tarantino. Uh, yeah. Apart from the Hateful Eight, he did they uh, bring on the uh, uh, Enrico Morio. Uh, what's his name? Guy with a good by the ugly. Uh, uh, I know uh, who you're uh, meaning here. Uh, so um, he brought him in to do score music. Score music is where it's actually. See, I was talking about the Foley sound there. You're actually watching mm-hmm. the scene. Imagine writing music, watching a scene, and you're actually writing it to picture. So that's score music. So you've mm-hmm. got score music, and you've got your pre-recorded music and again just when you're talking about swells and things like that that's more score music that's that's spe- specifically for and scene. do you ever have to because I've, I've watched a few uh, a few actors mm-hmm. have got um, podcasts mm-hmm. have you ever got to overdub yes and what what would be a reason for having to do that would it so, simply be there's been a technical technical issue and it's not picked up so a few what we were wanting give me another reason number one um, it could simply be that the audio is unusable. It could be unusable for a many things. It could be a juicy technical fault. It could be due to having let's let's say you're shooting a movie like Braveheart. Mm-hmm. You're middle of a field. You need generators. So again, the sound, your sound's going to, going to pick up all these generators. Or well, I've so, seen something with that. It's it's some type of movie like that. That's a bloody plane flying overhead. We've got to wait for it. Nah, you need to wait for it, and then right, okay, let's go again. So that, that, that's one reason it's deemed unusable. The second reason um, could be that maybe the director wants to change a line All right, in the okay. movie. So when you watch a movie, you'll see the over-the-shoulder shot, and maybe when it's flicked, that person's still speaking, mm-hmm. but they've actually replaced the line to maybe make more sense in the story. So that's a wee bit like... That's almost like, well, it was, I suppose it was easy with Darth Vader. Yes. Because the guy, you, you know, his face there's is no covered. Sink. Yep, there's no sign. But they then brought someone in. I don't even know if he, if he knew that his, the vocal parts were not going to be used. Uh-huh. But, um, uh But they I bring know, someone Earl, Was it James Earl Jones? Yeah, it was. Um, yep. Um, so that could be another reason. Um, another reason could be performance. Um, it could be... Maybe the actor just was not up to scratch that day. Therefore, it's what they call ADR. ADRs, um, automated dialogue replace or additional dialogue recording or replacement. Mm-hmm. Um, and it could be maybe an actor thought I can do that line better, even though the visuals are fine. Right. Okay. No, let's do this again. They went to the studio. They want and they'll go for it. it Sinks up mm-hmm. beautifully. Right on, go. Um, so that that's kind of one of the main reasons. On the flip side of that. You will get directors and actors um, who do not like ADR. Imagine you're on set and you have just shot a great scene. It's um, it was absolutely perfect. Then your wee sound guy, your boom operator, guys, this has not been recording. And normally you go right, it's fine. We've got production sound there. We'll re-record it mm-hmm. in ADR. Directors will go fake that because that character. They're in the zone, they're in that environment, they're nailing it. Now, at the time ADR and post production comes about, that actor is now he's on another job. He's away yeah. shooting another movie. So to bring him back in, he's out of that character's zone now. Therefore, mm-hmm. directors fear that they won't get that back. Um what they've also got nowadays as well, they've got ADR trucks. So see I'm talking about my my portable recording studio. Yeah, yeah. They'll sometimes bring them on set as well. And they'll basically shoot a scene and go, we're going quickly ADR that, we we'll get the actor in, but well, they're still on their own. But here's the other thing, so you you go to, you talk, you've got a film that yeah. is in the early stages yes. of, that you're going to be doing. Yep. Most films, 
they're not shot from start to finish. Absolutely not. It, it's, it's based usually upon right location right, availability. Loca- yeah, right. We're, we're at a farm. Yep. Let's 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 put all the scenes, record all the scenes that are going to be in this farm. Yep. Right. We need to be at the shop. All the scenes at the shop. And mm-hmm. so it's done out of sequence. Yeah. Which is it blows my mind. I know. Because I, I suppose that's when when you see a good actor. Because I'm just like. If the character's happy at the start, yep. and then halfway through the film they've got to be terrified, but but you've got to film the terrified bit first, and then I know again that's when it comes to your your director. Um, so, but, but what, so what I was going to say though was, you film the first scene, whatever that might be, mm-hmm. coming up, right? Yep. Does Simon? Is that his name? Yeah. Yep. Does Simon do a rough edit of that scene? So- at the time, I mean, I know he might change it, but does he do? This is pretty much how I'm on it. When do you start doing the sound, or do they do they film the entire thing and then hand it to you to do the sound, or do you do the sound throughout it being filmed? What I'll do is I'll have different ideas of different scenes that I want. I'll, I'll try. I'll mark with different ideas, but ultimately, what I'll have to do, I'll have to get that full finished film locked. I'll, I'll have it locked that way. Mm. I know there's no going back. Um, although there's been some things I've had, to have, I've had to do that, but anyway, I like having the full film, and then I'll start it. But start see, when you're there, finish. actually capturing the sound, yep. are you taking notes? Oh, aye, there's notes. Take one usable, take two, mm, mm. or even or, just or, like or plane overhead. Scene five, potential, potentially use. Yep. Blah 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 blah. Or consider using. Yep. Nice. Right. All the time, aye. So you, you need to keep your notes consistent. Um, and obviously you need to make sure you're shouting all your takes because the t- that's how you know how everything, everything's going to sync up and mm-hmm. then um, you need to rename, that's where, that's where file organisation and archiving comes in there because you need to make sure that you've marked everything because again there's nothing worse yep. where you know you've recorded something and you're going, where the fuck is that file? <laughs> I know it's there, I, I, remember rec- I remember recording, I remember listening back to it and you go, Shh, I've named that take two, that was actually take three. Shh. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that you do need to have a, a good bit of discipline there mm-hmm. um, in terms of that. Um, but as I, as I say, my, you're mentioning with the kind of different scenes and that. So I might say my brother, uh, James, he's uh, he's involved in the movie as well. He's actually directing along with Simon this, right, okay. this, new, this new movie. Um, so again, it's, so Simon and I, we've always acted in the, the different projects. Two of us, we enjoy it. Yeah. We enjoy acting. And um, I know it's good just to get an RB kind of a, a big creative buzz mm-hmm. going. Um, my brother, he's excellent at directing. Um, so my brother, he'll look at the script, he'll go, right, okay, this is the scene where Barry, you need to be mega terrified of this scene here. Remember, this is just him, and it'll explain to you, mm-hmm. and that's how you get your kind of a character. Um, or then, as you say, compare that to like maybe the start of a scene where, right, Barry, that's a big, maybe you're all happy, you've just came out of McDonald's, you've stuffed your face, you're great, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's, uh, that, and again, that, that's the importance of having a crew that you can rely on and that you work well with. Yeah, that you trust. Yeah, absolutely, you, yeah. you definitely need that. So tell us a wee bit then, I don't know how much you can tell us, but what is the current project that, that you've got so, on the go at the moment? So the current project is called An Honest Working Man. And sorry, when? So you and Simon done couple of films yep. previously but there was a gap so, yeah. so how did did you and Simon who, who approached who about let, let's you fancied maybe trying to right. do another one so I'm not going to get into details but basically Simon and I we never really spoke I mean we I mean, never really spoke for a couple of years um, we got back in, I mean the odd message and that back and forward mm-hmm. um, we got back in touch funny enough um, when Simon offered to edit the Christmas video Alright, okay. So, I was like, great. And that was the first time I'd seen Simon. Is Simon a local guy? Simon's from Falkirk. Falkirk, right. Yeah. Um, and that was the first time I'd seen Simon in a few years. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Simon had been telling me about a new script he was working on this back then. So I was going to ask you, is it, is it Simon that's coming up with the initial oh, Simon, idea? Simon's writing the script. Yep, right, Simon. okay. So what will happen, again, that's the great thing about it. my brother Simon and I working together, is... Simon will come up with the script, he'll then hand the script to me and be real, maybe, oh I love that bit, love that. See this bit, it's what about maybe doing this? And then mm-hmm. it'll, it'll add, that's how we work, it's, it's always just worked. Um, so I knew back then Simon was working on a new script 
And again we keep in touch, and then again and again. And then, when was it? It was last year. He says, Barry, when I'm just about finished a script, he went, Do you fancy getting back into a film? I was like, aye. I said, it's been, that's been 10 aye, years. Aye, I've got so much spare time on the go. <laughs> so that's, so that was 10 years ago. 10 years ago for our last yeah. movie. And we, he, he dropped the script off to me in March this year. Right, okay. That night, I read through the full thing. Loved it. And d- had he gave you wee hints, this is what it's about, or was it a kind of... No, it was... Can I read? What do you think? See what you think. Yep. Loved the characters in it. Um, loved the, the story behind it. Aye, I, I, it's just great. And so, has it been shot in and around central Scotland area? So, we've only shot so far the teaser, which hopefully... We're I know I've seen out. a sort of movie poster type thing. Yeah, so basically we've, we've shot a teaser for it. This is going to give people an idea of what the movie's actually about. Um, the next stage is we're going to need to start auditioning mm-hmm. for uh, for actors. And I say Simon, Simon, like myself, works full time. He also he's a, a videographer for weddings, right. so obviously I'm in my wedding band. The mm-hmm. So again, it's but the good thing about this, we've got a full crew on board with us. So I say my brother is yeah. obviously um, directing. We've got me Samantha. I was talking about she's mm-hmm. helping me with the sound. I've got an R action of mine, Chris Lucas, um, helping me out. Um, I've also got um, one of my colleagues, Fiona Reid. She's been our official photographer, she's been great. Uh, another colleague of mine, Neil Martin, he's helping out with all the Dolby Atmos right. um, mixing. Um, so not, and the crew's just going to get bigger. And what bigger. about, see when it actually gets going, what about like costume mm-hmm. and uh, makeup and all that? Like, how does. Yep, so what happens, what happens with that is it's just be a scene by scene basis. So basically, the first thing was we'll ask, because funny enough, you should say that I actually spoke to Simon about this. Because the movie's going to be set up north in the middle of nowhere, mm-hmm. a wee remote island where they're still living in the 1800 type thing, you know what right. I mean? Um, so we're looking for very plain clothing, it can't be cut with, with boss t-shirts and that, you know what I mean? It has <laughs> yeah, to be, yeah. aye, we're looking for very boring mm-hmm. clothes and that, so not that, that, that that's something we're, we're really considering that. Comes to makeup, I see there's a few people that obviously Simon and I that, that know as well and they want to get involved. Yeah. Um, which is great. Um, the Dean, the Dean Grant, she's excellent. Um, she's been involved in a few films that with us before. Um, so I, it's just going to hopefully grow and grow and grow from there. So, uh, how long's a piece of string, I suppose? But mm-hmm. assuming everything goes as planned, mm-hmm. when would you be hoping to start like day one filming? Let's go. We were we were hoping to start in July. Again, July busy season, wedding season for Simon and I. I'm, I would be really chuffed if we can get some auditions done for the start of August. Um, and then I would like to start filming September. Maybe even but how, then. Do you know how big a cast you're going to have? There'll be about I think about twenty, about right. twenty people. Um, you've got obviously your main main cast uh-huh. and then there's don't worry you're in the ring <laughs> you're in there alright <laughs> so you've obviously you're saying that the, you're hopefully going to be having some sort of trailer aye so hopefully we'll have a teaser the next couple of weeks right uh, so oh sorry yes a shout out to Ian Donald as well Ian Donald he's doing some of the the Score music for us. He's got right, okay. the, the slide guitar. The, the, you know, Ian right, Jay, he's, a good guy. He's uh, Ian loves his, his Delta Blues and he's put a wee Scottish twist on it. And, and he also album. knows every bloody instrument on the go and he's, and he's better at it than me, <laughs> which drives me up the wall. <laughs> so, but uh, the, 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 one of the tunes he wrote, we just recorded it on the fly and it works absolutely great. Uh, like an instrumental yeah. type thing. I'll send you, I'll send you later on. Uh, I'll send cool. you later on. What I was going to say was uh, the thing that drives me. Two things that drive me mad about movies nowadays. Uh-huh. So hopefully you're not going to repeat these errors. Right. <laughs> right. Ad, uh, trailers. Mm-hmm. Right. They give away the whole f- bloody story. Yep. Right. I'm like, no, no, I want, I, want, I don't need to go and see it now because I've seen the bloody see the trailer. trailer. Yep. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. And maybe I'm just getting old. I can't sit for three hours and watch a movie. All right. This okay. is why I love movies from the 80s. Hour and a half, yep. at the very most. Don't need an explanation. Yep. Right? 
Weird science. They just create a woman <laughs> on the computer. You didn't need to know how it all came about. Right. It's just happened. So within 15 minutes, you're into the story. Yep. It doesn't take 45 minutes just to establish who the hell everybody is. So but what you're actually talking about there is a... It's the, you're talking about the narrative there. Uh, there's a theory uh, called Toradov's theory where it's basically broken down into three where you've act, seen Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. Mm-hmm. Now, I used to know these off by heart, but basically, you're looking for the... Stab, the, stab, the you're establishing your, your scrivener scene. You've then got something that happens that dis- disrupts the norm. Mm-hmm. You've then got, like, your... your um, I'm going to look this up because it will just bug me. What, what age is Simon? So, Simon is 50. So the reason I'm asking though, right, uh-huh. is, see from a musician point of view, mm-hmm. I love heavy metal rock music, yep. right, see someone that's 18 years old mm-hmm. that loves heavy metal rock music, the two of us probably approach it differently mm-hmm. because I was brought up on different rock music from what they've been brought up on. Mm-hmm. If you're into making films, if you're 50, you might approach the way you make a film very differently from the way somebody who's 21 might approach, mm-hmm. right? Because Simon has been brought up in the 80s yeah, and the 90s where films were generally shorter. So? Right? If you, if you, if Simon was 21, likely that it might be longer because he's been brought up in that kind of era. So, so it depends. I mean, Simon tells it himself, I mean, so basically the name I should say, the actual name of the company, Haggis Western yes. Film. It was Haggis Western Film, it's now Haggis Western Motion, Motion Picture. <coughs> Where Haggis Western came about, Simon was a massive fan of Spaghetti Western. I think I'm sure it was his granddad. His granddad right, okay. introduced him to it. And he loved Spaghetti Westerns. He loved those drawn out scenes. Mm-hmm. And that's where he gets a lot of his influence. No dialogue. Just looks. And Again, back to the sound. Yep. The sound playing um, a massive part. So that's what I um, that's what Simon's um, looking out for. So no matter I just found this here. That's uh, that's what it was. The equilibrium. So that's when you start off. After, just when you're talking to you. So just establishing everybody. That's establishing everything. The disruption of the equilibrium. That's something happens. So weird science. Um, they create. They create uh, a woman. woman yeah. of, so that's disrupting the norm. Mm-hmm. Then you've got the recognition of the disruption. So they recognise that this isn't normal mm-hmm. uh, an attempt to try and repair it right okay the damage and then the new equilib- the new equilibrium that there is that narrative you'll find that in Toy Story The Lion King um, you ever thought about doing mentioning Toy Story what about animation that is a tough tough thing just yeah, because again, I mean I'd love you, to you get someone into the studio the reason I'm asking my brother-in-law has done voiceover work mm-hmm and uh, I've seen him do audition tapes, mm-hmm. and it might be that you've got he's got two or three lines to do, but he's got to do them the same line with different emotions. Oh, different emotions, yep. Um, and and you've seen like you, you've been clips of Tom Hanks going out to do Toy Story, aye. and he's like, oh well, and he, and, and he does. Snake he does, in my boot. He does it a snake certain in my boot. Yeah, aye, yeah, totally. All oh, different emotions. No, I would love to do that. The thing we would we call it with um, with animation. I mean, there's a reason animation takes years, and it's because it's, well, I've not looked into it as mm-hmm. such, and I, I don't know what like, the technology is nowadays. I dare say it's it's more um, it's more accessible now, um, but it's something I've never really explored. But not animation, that, but that'd be even a wee short, a wee animation short um, would, would be great. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's get an honest working man finished. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, th- there is a Facebook page. Yes, for it. So anybody that wants to kind of keep up to date yep. with at what stage you're at or just anything, any news about it, they can follow the Facebook page. Yep. It'll be updated regularly, yep. especially once the project gets going yep. and Absolutely. There's, there's regular updates. We've usually got a website now. But we've well. obviously spoke all about the music, uh, well, music stuff at the start, movies. Let's end on, what's your five favourite movies then? Five favourite movies, easy. Right, number I've got one. five as well. My number one movie. Goodfellas. Right, okay. Love it. Second movie, Casino. Third movie. <laughs> there's a theme going on no, here. there's a theme, right? 
Wilfie Wall Street. Right, okay. Is in there. Number four, number four, number four. It does, it, it, it can just, five films that you just, it doesn't matter how many times you see them. I mean, you just love watching La Bamba. Them. La Bamba, the Ritzy Valen story. Yep. Love it. And the last one, it's going to be Back to the Future, isn't it? It's going to be. It's funny because my five, I, I, I'm not like a, I'm going to pick five obscure ones that nobody's heard of. Aye. Right? Jaws has got to be Probably up there. Aye. Especially the, the second half of the movie. Yep. When the three of them are on the boat. Aye. Right? That's good. First Back to the Future is aye. just, doesn't matter That's how many great. times I see that, aye. I can watch it over and over and over. Yep. American Werewolf in London. Nice. Right. Nice. It's, so I see and of, of course, when it was filmed, Gives it character yep. that you don't get nowadays as Absolute, well. I, but again, you know, and I don't know if it was the type of cameras used, the, the no, type of again, colour. I it was used obviously it was back and then that. It's on tape, wasn't it? So well, colours weren't as well on, on actual film, mate. Yeah. What was the other ones? Uh, Tom Hanks one, and it's it's not a big one of his, but the Burbs. The Burbs. I've, I've, I've right? seen that. Love it. It's one of the. It's such a good movie. Right, okay. And it's the entire movie is just set in a cul-de-sac. Right. I don't need to watch I've not seen that. Such a good movie. Right, okay. And uh, number five. What would it be? Maybe Rocky Four. Rocky. Oh, I <laughs> forget about the Rocky movies as well. You can go on, couldn't you? Aye. Well, hopefully an honest working man will be on your list you this time next year. Barry, thanks for coming on, man. Awesome, mate. Thank you. Till next time. Aye, indeed. All right, <laughs> cheers, Barry.